Hi everyone, I am Lara Milligan and I work here at Brooker Creek Preserve. Brooker Creek Preserve is a super important piece of natural area or green space or undeveloped land with lots of trees and plants for the animals to roam here. And you might confuse the terms preserve and park and might be thinking, well, what's really the difference? So the main difference is, is that parks are for people and preserves are for the plants and animals. And so they have a ton of space here at Brooker Creek Preserve to roam around. And speaking of animals, there's a squirrel right over there. <laughs> He's eating on some holly berries. So they get to do just that. And there's some birds over there as well. And this is the largest green space that we have in our area. It's huge, huge, huge. It's pretty much the only green you can see on the map if you look at a map of our area. And this place is not only important for the plants and animals, but it's important for us too. It does a lot of things to help us in terms of air quality, water quality, and just to have some nice fresh air to breathe. So some of you guys may have visited Brooker Creek Preserve before, maybe on a field trip or maybe even with your family. And where we are standing right now is actually over Brooker Creek. We're standing on a bridge over Brooker Creek. And a lot of people will often ask, well, where does the creek start or where does this water come from? And that's a great question. Our creek is unique in that the water you see here is comes solely from rain. And so when we're in the rainy season and it's raining a ton all throughout, like think summer, it's really rainy, right? And so the creek, the water level in the creek will go up. And then when we get into the dry season and winter and fall and we get less rain, the creek will go down. And this creek ultimately flows into Lake Tarpon. So if any of you guys have ever visited John Chestnut Park, you can see Lake Tarpon right there. And so that's where this creek ultimately flows into. So one other thing to note in this particular area, this is what we might call a wetland. So there's water often down on the ground and there's trees above and lots of animals love to call wetlands home. And one particular species that we often see right here is the American alligator. And so we have seen some really big ones and this year we even got to see some really cute baby alligators here. So again, we help to support a lot of our area of wildlife here at Brooker Creek. So let's go see what else, what other animals we can find on the creek. I mean on the trail, come with me. Come on. Okay, so right here, another species that this preserve supports is the gopher tortoise. And we have a ton of gopher tortoises here at Brooker Creek, and they are actually considered a threatened species. So it's super awesome. Again, a benefit that the preserve um, provides is lots of habitat for these gopher tortoises. So th this is what we call its burrow. So there's a hole down there where the male or female will slide down and then there's a big deep long tunnel that they will hang out and hide in there actually like the majority of the day they'll be down in this burrow and occasionally you'll find them outside getting some sun because right they're reptiles they're cold-blooded they need that sun to stay nice and warm and the really cool thing with the gopher tortoise is they're considered something called the keystone species which means they support a lot of other species of animals and mostly through this burrow. Lots of other species will go in there to find shelter, whether it's in the rain, or if we have a wildfire, or if they just wanna escape predators. Okay, so we are here at what we call the Live Oak Shelter. 
And it's called that because we're surrounded by not only live oaks, but a variety of other species and different types of oak trees. So one thing about an oak hammock is it's often dominated by oak trees. So they grow up really, really tall. And then because they shade underneath so much, the area kind of on the ground level tends to be a little bit more open than maybe some other habitats that we see. So some of the species that we might see here are deer. They particularly love that more open, what we call understory, the area underneath the trees. They like to be able to move around without running into a bunch of really thick vegetation. And this habitat will differ from the habitat we're going to look at next. And I'll tell you why and how oak hammocks come to be what we know as oak hammocks. All right, guys, I've got something exciting for you. It's poop. So in the science world, we often call poop scat, S-C-A-T. And this right here is gopher tortoise scat. So we were just talking about the gopher tortoise and they are herbivores. So they mostly eat on different grasses and all sorts of different plants. And you can kind of see that in their poop. <laughs> it's mostly made up of exactly what they're eating. So this probably looks quite different from where we just were at the live oak shelter, right? And that's because this is a totally different habitat or ecosystem. This is what we call a pine flatwoods. And that, so remember oak, live oak shelter was dominated by oak trees and the flatwood, the pine flatwood shelters dominated mostly by pine trees. So that is what you'll see here. It's a mix of different species of pine trees and then it's very, very open and sunny, very different from the oak hammock that was shaded out by the large oaks. And this ecosystem in particular really relies on fire, which might sound a little, you know, strange. Why would you want fire? But that's because historically before we were here in Florida, there would be lightning storms all the time, right? Remember summer, I said it rains a lot lightning would start fires and it would just go forever and ever and ever because there was nobody to put out the fire. And so this particular habitat and ecosystem has adapted over the years to survive fire. So they have all really cool techniques to, they might look like they're dead, but they will jump right back and thrive. So underneath here, these are saw palmettos and these leaves will burn up super, super fast but the bulk of the plant is actually underground. And so it's safe and protected and it'll shoot out some new leaves probably within a week after a fire comes through. And then if you look up at the pine trees, you'll notice they don't really have lower branches, right? And that's another fire adaptation so that the fire can't climb up the tree. And in the absence of fire, so without fire, you'll start to notice in this case, so there's actually an oak tree way out there, that big spreading tree. And oak trees aren't designed to survive fire like pine trees. And so if we keep fire out of the system, more and more oak trees will pop up and shade out and this habitat will turn into an oak hammock. So it's really important that we keep fire in Florida's ecosystems because this helps to support a pine flatwoods habitat and all the, the animals and plants that rely on it. Okay guys, so we are at a really cool part of the preserve that we call an ecotone. And that is basically the area where two different ecosystems come together. 
So if you look over to my left, or now my right, <laughs> this area you can see there's some pine trees, there's some saw palmetto. Remember back to that uh, pine flatwoods habitat and ecosystem that we just looked at? So they tend to like higher and drier areas. And then if we continue to look, you'll start to see ferns pop up, some other tree species come in, there's some oaks, there's even our native palm tree. We start to get cypress and a tree called tupelo, which really like wet areas. And so it transitions from what we might call an upland to down to a wetland. And the really cool thing in Florida is that it only takes very slight changes, a matter of inches in elevation to dramatically change what we see above ground, right? That's pretty cool. And that's really all has to do with where the water is. So as I mentioned, Brooker Creek Preserve is home to a lot of different plants and animals. Unfortunately, it's also home to some plants that we call invasive. And that means that they're not from this area and they cause harm, whether it's to the local plants and animals, or sometimes it can even be harm in terms of human health. But the species that we have here is something called Salvinia minima, or some people call it water spangles. It's actually a floating water fern. It's from South America, and it got here likely from people who have aquariums at home, and maybe they were done with their aquarium and accidentally dumped it, and just it thrived on the environment that we have here. Unfortunately for us, as you can see, it forms these dense, dense mats. And that is bad for the species of plants and animals that live in the water, right? Because they need sunlight in order to grow and survive. And all that salvinia or the water spangles blocks the sunlight from allowing them to reproduce. And then it goes through the whole impacts of photosynthesis, right? oxygen levels will go down and so it's just really bad for the ecosystem here. So it's an unfortunate thing that we have here but we wanted to point it out to you guys on our virtual tour of Brooker Creek. All right guys so that wraps up our virtual tour here at Brooker Creek Preserve and one of the places we always like to wrap up our tours is right here at this man-made pond because this retains water year-round so we can find all sorts of really cool animals here. There's always frogs and tadpoles. Sometimes we find snakes. We've even had little gators in here. There's fish. Uh, one time there was even an otter swimming through here. So it's just a great place. If you do come here to Brooker Creek Preserve, if you've never been, we encourage you to stop here. And if you come back, always check out this pond to see what you can find. And then we also like to wrap up with some things that you guys can do to help protect our waterways and protect the environment, right? So one thing we always suggest is picking up litter, right? Whether it was yours or not, it's important to pick up that trash so it doesn't end up in the waterways and potentially harming our native species. Um, another thing, if you guys have pets, especially dogs, right? We love to take our dogs out on a walk, but they have business to do too. Remember we saw that gopher poop? Well, your dog poops too, I know it does, but it's really important that you pick that poop up. A lot of people think, oh, it's just fertilizer, we should leave it there, but that's actually not the case. It's not part of the natural environment. Dogs weren't found here in Brooker Creek Preserve, so it's really important that we pick up that poop so it doesn't end up in the water and harming our native animals again. And then do some things at home to help create something like Brooker Creek in your yard, whether that's planting a tree, you can provide a bird bath, um, you know, just do little things in your yard, set up a bird house or um, bird feeder and help to attract species to your yard.